following interview was conducted with Denver Sams, Professor Emeritus Industrial Technology for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, March 18, 2010 in Stewart Center. Welcome, Dr. Sams, and good afternoon to you. And thank you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and early years. Well, I was born in Bimble, Kentucky. Now you don't have a one, one of my books. I've ri written a book, and it, it tells it. The title of that book is "End of the Road in Bimble, Kentucky." Bimble, Kentucky, is where I was born. You have to raise questions because I don't know quite sure what. Well, that's all right. Go ahead and tell us about your parents and growing up, high school and grade school. Uh, Well, I was born May 16th, 19 and 20. I'm almost 90. I'll be 90 about two months from now. <laughs> and the, the place that I was born, as I said, was Bimble, Kentucky, and I grew up and decided to go to, go, go to school, go to college. And I went to school, Eastern Kentucky University. Okay. And that, that's where I went to college. But after I went to college there, I, I left to go to the Navy. What year would that have been? During the war? World War II? Oh, yes. I was in World War II, and I was in the Navy only six months before I was injured. The, the Germans almost hit me with an artillery shell. Hit me right beside me. Was close enough that I could see the shells of the dirt coming back down. I didn't hear it. I didn't see it. Now the hearing is that you don't hear the one that sees you. This one saw me <laughs> and I didn't hear the sound at all. I didn't hear a thing. Strange. Weird. Now I spent six months, I spent three years in a hospital after this happened? Well, I, I'm sorry I wouldn't spend, I would just spent three years, but better part of a one, one year in the hospital. And they tried to, all kinds of things to find out if they could call my ear to grow back, but it, but it wouldn't. So they finally decided to give me um, give me the going all over, and I finally, finally was decided that I should not go over, over overseas another time. So they put me on all active duty, but in the un inside the United States. I was given about fifteen hundred, about fifteen dollars per month, which was nothing. You know what I did? I decided that I would sue the government, and I, I was twenty-seven years old then, and they decided that they would put me in I, well because we put me in a, in a situation of in which I had to go to a, an army hospital or a, a 
a committee in Washington, D.C., on my own expense. And I was Well, I was quite kind of crazy because I took took the money that it took to make the trip over to to New New York, and they sent me from there to the Navy Hospital in Philadelphia, biggest one, biggest Army hospital in, in, in the world. They put me there and they sent me there. <clears throat> and I had to uh, be on my own, of course. My wife went with me, and we spent two nights and days in, in the hospital. They, they put stuff in my ear and almost killed me because it was, it was the most, most painful thing I ever got, uh, I, I ever knew of. And they sent me back to the hospital uh, back to the hospital after I'd been given two days of, of uh, examination, sent me back to the hospital, well, not to the hospital, but to the committee that I had, I mean, high-ranking officers, admirals and generals, about five of them. They really gave me a going over. And they sent me back home, waiting, 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 waiting. And I finally got the word indicating that I had been approved for retirement in the high in the uh, in, in the Navy, and I was given what I thought was made me rich, $150.50. Now, in 1948, that was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. I told my wife, I said, my gosh, I couldn't retire. But I didn't know about the cost of living. I didn't know about it. <laughs> but it kept, it kept growing, kept growing, 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 growing. You know what my my income now is not 15750 which they gave me when they were they, they agreed to put me in retirement from the service right but they my i've gotten a, i've gotten a lot of money i don't know what i did with it <laughs> but the price per month per month has now reached a hundred about fifteen hundred dollars. Not a hundred and fifty seven fifty, but that fifteen hundred dollars. Now every month, I mean every year it would go up. And it still does. So that's one of the biggest decisions I ever made in my life. I think my my good wife was 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 a was a best best decision, <laughs> but that that's the story. Okay. But I did the right thing. I did the right decision mm -hmm. because they owed it. They didn't owe me put fifteen hundred fifteen dollars, and that's why I, I fought and I won. Um, tell us a little bit about before you came to Purdue, and why did you, uh, did you come to Purdue after you got out of the service? I was, I was out of the Navy before, I, I, I went, went into the Navy, but I owed two, two credits, or two, two classes I had to take. In college, at, at your college? In college. But when I got through the Navy and I came back and saw the president again, <laughs> he said, so I says, you, says you, I'll, I'll give you the degree, degrees. So he gave me the 
gave me the, the permission. So I then went on into the Navy and have spent the six months before I was injured. So I came directly to the Navy, directly to Purdue, and came to Purdue in about the 20th, 20th or the 18th or 12th of, of September and get it Purdue as a, as a freshman uh, studying in a, a second effort and went took five years to get my master's degree at Purdue because when they put me in Purdue they put me 100% teaching and walk on one class at a time. <laughs> so, I, so I, but I did complete a master's degree in, at Purdue. I got to, got to, and after that five or six years, I was promoted to associate professor. Now, I've decided that I, I, I had enough. But be, be immediately afterwards, I decided I'd better, I better keep on going. <laughs> Good for you. So it took me almost 10 years to get a doctor's degree. Boy, but, but that kept me busy. At the time, I was trying to get to my degrees. So that is the story of, of my life in terms of getting degrees. Okay. But the degree was worth it. I've spent about 25 years as a, as a associate professor, a full professor, and to the various to, to, to titles, director, assistant director, associate director, director, whatever titles they were giving me. But I, be, before I be, was given the promotion to associate dean for academic affairs, that was my title. And that was the title that I had, and that was the title that I, I McNally was my boss. What a wonderful boss. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, I completed, completed my degree work and retired as associate professor and as associate dean for about 25 years. And I completed 40 years of work with Purdue and retired. <laughs> Can you tell me what the um, what were your responsibilities as the associate dean for academic affairs? What were some of the things you were involved with? You know, it's kind of interesting because McNally gave me a title of, of associate dean for academic affairs. He didn't write down anything, he didn't, there was never a written re record on, on file, any place. He turned me loose. I couldn't believe it. He had a lot of confidence. But I, he told, he, he told more people, that more people than I can tell, that I was the most creative person that he ever had. He told me that, he told people that over and over that I had the most creative person that he ever, he ever had. 
Where were you located because before Kanoi Hall was built? Where was your office? Uh, the building where they tore it part, part of it down. That was where my office was. Part of Michael Golden? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. But I don't know what they've got right now. They, they probably got, probably got every, every, everything that they... Uh, well, they had laboratories that I worked in. But I can't think of the title of what they call that book, the, the place where they had the offices. But it was whatever they had. Sure. Okay. Were you, uh, let me ask you this, industrial education, was that the department that you, which yes. is now industrial? Yeah, right, right, right. Industrial, now it's known as industrial technology. It was right. changed in 1984. Right, right. Okay. Right. And Joe Carroll was the head at that time. Right, right, right. Joe Carroll was a heavy smoker, and he died a little too early. He, he, he was, he was a, a, a very heavy smoker. Did he get lung cancer? I think so. Oh. I don't know what it was. But okay. He died pretty early. Of course, I can name quite a few people that died because of smoking. Um, at, let me ask you this. In the 60s, there was a Department of Technical and Applied Arts, and that was part of industrial engineering for some years around that time. Do you recall that? I guess it was similar to that. Okay. And then it was moved over to the School of Technology. About 60. 55 to 61, there was this department, and there was some affiliation with industrial engineering. Yeah, I guess. I, I, okay. I, I, no, that's okay. Um, who were some of the other, uh, when, did you, did you teach in industrial uh, education? Yes, I did. Okay. I taught there, that department, and whenever they created the School of Technology, mm -hmm. I was one of the original. In 64. 1964. Sure. And I was one of the original persons. Uh, I was a department head before I became associate dean. But whenever they named me as uh, assistant, well, I don't know what my title was. <laughs> you had several titles. That's all right. Whatever. Uh, but. I was, I was uh, acting well. I've forgotten what my title was now. But I, two or three years after, two or three, two or three, four years, I got another. Whew, they got another uh, job. Well, I didn't get a job. They got another, put me in the hospital again to get my ear, to try to get my ear sealed. And that's when I went, almost died, 1967. And they, they tried to get me the ear sealed and they, they put something in there, but what happened? They got an abscess bug. They got in the brain. And when I was gotten unconscious, they were next morning they operated on me. And I was unconscious for eight days and nights. And I, of course, uh, nobody really thought I was going to live, 1967. But I did survive. And I couldn't read. I couldn't. I couldn't call a piece of wood a piece of wood. I couldn't. I got. I didn't, couldn't name anything. They didn't think I was going to survive. They didn't, they didn't think I was going to talk. <laughs> but I showed them. <laughs> so, but I got I through that, and it's uh, it's. 
a miracle that I died. It did survive. Sounds like it. Oh. Yeah. Let me ask you about um, O.D. Lasco. You know, O.D. Remember O.D. Lasco? Oh gosh, yes. He brought. He's a person who brought me to Purdue. He was my professor down at Eastern Kentucky, and he came on ahead of me. He told me one time. He says, "I want you to come to Purdue when you get out of the Navy." So I stayed in contact with him, and he brought me to Purdue, and I give, of course, he's dead and gone now. Sure. I never met him, but uh, some, I, I knew that you would have probably known him. Oh, yes. He was my good friend. Great. He was, he was a very good supporter of me, me. Was, was for a long time. Mm -hmm. All the years that he was here. Full professor. He uh, he was a great great friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the couple. The do you remember um, Dr. Lashi, Charles Lashi? Absolutely. He was our first dean. That's right. For two years. Then McNally became dean. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have made a note on that. Right. Yeah, okay. Right, right. Lashi did went to some do uh, what regional campus or something like that. I think. He uh, he got other titles I've forgotten. He, okay, uh, but uh, he he was he was dean of he was dean for two years, School of Technology, right. and then he became associate dean or some such title. Uh, I don't know what his title was. Too many too many things. Right. Let me ask you, do, when you first came here, the campus was a lot smaller. Yeah, boy. Oof. Maybe, I don't know what the number of people there were in the, in the campus. Do you know? No, I don't, but the numbers would have been a lot smaller than they are oh, today. Oh, yes. And the facilities have a, changed a lot. A, a, few, a few thousand. Probably. Very few thousand. Uh, probably, yes. Not 40,000. Where did you do your, uh, where were, was most of your uh, offices and things in Michael Golden, or were there some other place on campus that you used? Well, I had a camp. I had you probably a, spread around. Uh, uh, South Campus Courts. Oh, okay. That's, that's what it used to be. We right. were had it for quite a few years, and, and until they created the new School of Technology. Then I had a beautiful new office. Only two or three years before I retired. <laughs> Working your way up. <laughs> oh yeah. Did you work uh, with the uh, students? You had interaction with the students for academic affairs, or did you work with the faculty or both? Oh, I worked with the department heads, and worked with all of them. I I didn't. I never taught again. They told me that I was once one professor who would not make, teach anymore for about, about 25 years, I, whatever it was, because they wanted me to be chairman of various kinds of committees. And I was a chairman of this, chairman of that. I forgot what it was now. And but after I was then they eliminated the department. I was the head department head of the department for about three about three years. That's when they created the new school of technology. Then uh, one number they put it put me in. in Acting, well, I forgot what you called me, but I was no longer going to teach anymore because they had to keep me pretty busy with all of the stuff. That, and that's when I got to cre creating things that McNally never knew about. Can you give me an example? Uh, Created uh, 
<laughs> where to start. It's <laughs> okay. Just anything that comes to mind. Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Once I, once I got that title, I started to create things, and I, I can't I can't name things mm -hmm. that I did create, but so many things that I can't name. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I was department head. I mean, I was acting head for various kinds of things, and uh, I can't name it all. Sure, okay, that's fine. Um, one of the um, things I was going to ask you about, the group that used to come, the plumbers, the United Association, Apprentices of Plumbing, were you involved with that in any teaching way? Or? I, I was I was really not not active in what about that at all. Oh, okay. But, but the they other departments. Joe Carroll was pretty active with that. Was he? Okay, yeah, that's yes. fine. Now, uh, were you ever a faculty fellow in the residence halls, the fact fellow program? I don't think I was ever that. Okay. I know that you got uh, the distinguished graduate, or recipient of the distinguished graduate from Eastern Kentucky. That's one of the awards you oh, got. Oh yes, oh yes. Were there some other awards that you received? They. Uh, That's gave very me, nice. Gave me an award. They created a hundred people. For, well, a hundred, hundred years. Is when I got an award of some sort. I forgot what it was. I gave them some money. Eastern Kentucky? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they gave me an award. And my name was up was on a on a plaque on the wall down there. I guess it still is. <laughs> they tried to but they they did they did give me that, that nice award and I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you make a couple comments on your uh, family? Where did you meet your first wife? In Kentucky? Did you go to meet her in college? Well, my first wife was well, I don't know where to start on her because uh. she was really something else. She was a most talented girl uh, because she uh, she was a seamstress, and she web got so many awards. I got them and got them on a plaque on the wall at home, right, one with which we put because she they they didn't have anything. They, they didn't have a, a woman with the pick with the, with their dress on. So they had to put a dress on her. So they, so they had, had to put her on a picture on uh, a sketch on her on the on the woman. Then they put the woman on 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 the on the, on the letter. I, I, I can't know what you call it, but. Mm -hmm. They put, but it was her, her in a dress on that because they didn't have a dress on the one the, for the girl, and I mean she was really really beautiful in terms of dressing. She did all of those things more times in four and in four H, and she won more more than you can imagine. Wow, that's nice. She she. She had a plaque. But she was a painter. She was more talented than I could imagine. I tried to encourage her to, to take more lessons, and but she didn't want to. But she didn't want to. She, she liked doing what? She she had had enough. Mm -hmm. Now I know that you've been in your retirement activities. You've been pretty active, haven't you? Well, you mean different things that you've done. Uh, you used to exhibit at the Round the Fountain. Are you still doing that? 
around the Fountain Art Fair. Mm -hmm. Well, I retired after 10, 10 years, and after 10 years of, of jeered, I had to be jeered. It had to be awarded every year if you're going to get in that. And I didn't have any chance that it was going to happen. And I told my daughters, two daughters, that they said, well, you should get in the art fair. I said, well, they wouldn't take me. But they did the first time. And for 10 years in a row, I was jeered. You had to be jeered. And they have jeered me for 10 years in order. Then I decided my second wife was having to We, we, we went to her house in, in, in Tucson, Arizona. We spent about three or four months, four or five months. And she would have to stay home for, for a month or more while I did some work back home. So I decided I was worth it, so I, I, I stopped. So I retired. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, are, do you have any act, projects you're working on now? or? Still working with your woods? Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. And I, the, there was another art fair that, that begged me to get in their art fair, and, and I finally decided I would. And it was Duncan Hall Art Fair. Do you know about it? I've heard about it, but I've never been there. Well, they had the second year that I was in there, Second year, I I went went with them, and there was about twenty or thirty juries in the building, and it's the first Sunday in November every year. First Sunday in November, and I was in that for about fifteen years. Now they finally quit after about after about fifteen years, fourteen or fifteen years because they weren't selling very much. That was after the, 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 a couple of years ago whenever the Congress started to kill, let so, uh, miss so much uh, that uh, they couldn't sell, couldn't sell very much stuff. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So they, they quit. Mm. Now, I don't have an, a, a work, but I do have another project. They're, they're going to have a, a party for me on my big birthday. May, May 16th, 19, and well, two years, two months from now, <laughs> they're, going to, they're going to be giving me a, 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 a 90th birthday party. Very. My daughter, uh, the daughters are going to, they're, they're working on it already. So I, I can't, I can't stop it, I uh, don't do, do anything, they're, they're, they're going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to be here in town? Oh yes. Okay. And I'm going to build, I'm going to build I've started to work already on, on the bowls, about so big, and I'm going to build, build nine bowls, and I'm going to give them to the people who, who win, they're, they're, going to, they're going to get get it for having, having drawn out of a big, a big list, whatever list is going to be. And I will do the winners will be drawn. So I, that's still going to be something. I still, I've still started to work on that already. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing something. That's right. Uh, let me ask you, do you have an out, is there an outstanding event in your life that you recall? 
outstanding event. Uh-huh. Well, you know, the most outstanding was is, is my great boss, George McNally, and the things he did, did for me and, and, and turned me loose. Because he turned me loose and I, he, he, tur he really gave me freedom to do what I wanted to do. I couldn't believe it. So I, I don't know what would be the most expensive I don't know what would be the most outstanding thing I've done, or, or I don't know what it Got would a lot be. Of, uh, as you reflect back, uh, you had a long career here at Purdue. <laughs> Forty years. <laughs> Did you think you'd be that long? Well, I never thought about it, but, but you got there. <laughs> oh. oh, no. But it got there. Yeah. I'm going to let you make some comments in closing, whatever you'd like to say. Something I forgot to ask or would you like to share? Well, I think the most enjoyable things, I think, were probably the, the, the freedom that the dean gave me to do what I wanted to do. Now. That's hard, hard to name all of that, but the very fact that he gave me the freedom, the flexibility to do what I needed to do, what I wanted to do. I wrote, I wrote letters for him by the dozens and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. But the, the most enjoyable were the things that I did uh, uh, I can't name them. Sure. All right. But all of them were enjoyable. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's very nice. It, and you'd still do a little traveling, though. Oh, well. I traveled. My wife and I traveled. And we, we talked about it. And we decided that too many people were dying. And we, would, we, better, have, we better do some traveling while we want to. And we traveled. We, uh, we, we took about a, a week. Went someplace in South America and celebrated our 25th anniversary. And we went on afterward doing. We did. We did travel. We did travel. We did travel uh, many, many times because we thought we would die young. But we didn't. Okay. My wife finally died. She died when she was about six, about seventy-six or seventy-seven or something like that. Sure. But she was but pretty good. Yeah, that's very good. That's yeah. very good. Right. She's been dead now about fifteen years. Is she buried here? Pardon? Is she buried here in town? No, no, she's dead. No, is she buried here? Oh yes. Oh, oh okay. yes. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Dr. Sams, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity, and wonderful. Ninety years, that's great. Well, I, I don't know what I did to help you, but... You sure did. I, I, flexibility of all the things I was permit to do. Right. And the most enjoyable was McNally and his right. boss, his, yeah. his, his leadership. Most of most uh, enjoyable part of my, my whole life was a, was a freedom he gave me to do freedom, freedom. And I never have a written description of what I was supposed to do. <laughs> you just did it, right? <laughs> right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sand. I appreciate that.